Bitcoin failed this week as the failed Mon Gox exchange is stepping up efforts to return up to $9 billion of Bitcoin to its creditors. What impact does this have on the Bitcoin price short term? And what is the momentum of Bitcoin in the medium term? We'll discuss this with our next guest, Joey Wagner, producer of the Bitcoin Minute, a technical analyst who has a very interesting formula he'll share with us. This formula uh, predicts the Bitcoin price of the next halving cycle and the halving cycle after that. It uses a mathematical formula that has been pretty accurate in calling the Bitcoin price of previous halving cycles. So stay tuned for Joey's prediction for what's next in the next two halving cycles and beyond. This episode is brought to you by iTrust Capital, an IRA that offers 35 crypto assets and the lowest trading fees in the crypto IRA space at 1%. If you're over 18 and you'd like to open a new account with cash or roll over an existing account, click on itrust.capital slash David to learn more and find out more about the unique tax benefits as well of opening up a Bitcoin IRA. And if you fund your account using my referral link, you'll get $100 in signing bonuses. Joey, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Thank you for having me, David. Nice to be here. Nice to have you. First time we've had you on the show. Your father was a very popular Gary Wagner, editor of thegoldforecast.com, fan favorite. So I'm uh, glad to finally uh, have the chance to interview you. Tell us a little bit about your work and uh, the type of chart reading that you do. I work primarily on Bitcoin and I am a technical analyst. I use both Eastern and Western indicators. My favorite for Eastern is Ichimoku and candlestick patterns for Western indicators. I firmly believe in Fibonacci and that's probably my most widely used tool. I've been um, reporting on Bitcoin since 2018. So let's talk about some recent price action. So momentum, is it to the downside or upside? We've seen a bit of a pullback from its highs of $71,000 a coin just last week, and it's been sliding ever since. What's been going on and how are you reading momentum? Well, I see Bitcoin likely trading sideways to downward for the upcoming weeks. And the recent pullback is largely based on what you said earlier, the Mount Gox repayments, which wallet trackers have tracked, been following the wallet associated with the trustee that is going to be repaying these Bitcoins. It's 142,000 Bitcoins, and they were just moved off of a centralized exchange on Monday. And that is a large reason for the pullback. Yeah, just a paragraph off the Bloomberg News article. The original cryptocurrency dropped as much as 3.1% and was trading at about $68,000 as of 8.13 a.m. Tuesday in New York. The weakness spread to smaller coins, including Binance Coin, uh, Polkadot, and Dogecoin. Second-ranked Ether was little change. Virtually all of the more than 137,000 Bitcoin worth over $9.3 billion held in Mt. Gox wallets was moved starting early Asian hours on Tuesday, according to data from CryptoQuant and Arkham Intelligence. So this is a very uh, niche piece of news related to just one um, event now, suppose suppose this event were to sort itself out. Do you think Bitcoin is oversold? Um, no, I think this event could provide some bearish pressure. I mean, in the past, when people had anticipated that the Mt. Gox Bitcoin repayments were coming up and they just moved Bitcoin or presumed that they did, it had a dramatic effect on price and it brought it down by about 3-4% in a single day last occurrence, and it led to about a 10% pullback last occurrence. So once this happens, and the deadline for repayment is October, but the fact that they just moved it off of a centralized exchange means that they're likely getting ready to reimburse those customers. Suppose this piece of news were not to be in the headlines, just looking at the charts, just looking at it from a purely technical perspective, does Bitcoin have more downside to go? Well, from a purely technical perspective, it actually is holding rather well, and it, it's above the 20-day exponential moving average, above the 50-day moving average. However, we did just have a bearish cross between the 100 and 50-day simple moving averages just yesterday. So technically, it looks a little bit top-heavy to me. So Bitcoin has broken above $70,000 a couple times this year. First, $74,000 was the high. Then last week, it was $71,000. But we're looking at around $70,000 as a ceiling. Why is it having a hard time breaking above that ceiling, you think? 
I think it's um, fundamentally based. The original $74,000 was made on anticipation and hype about the spot Bitcoin ETFs. And once they actually came into play, traders sold the news. And, and since then, there hasn't been any catalyst to propel it above that. Okay. So short term then, where do you see Bitcoin headed? Short term, I see Bitcoin headed lower to sideways. And I'm looking at around $52,000 for ultimate bottom that we may reach within the next couple weeks to months. How did you arrive at that number? Um, it's a historically a very prominent resistance and support level. It's also the 61.8% retracement of our recent rally. Let's talk about your work on Bitcoin halving cycles. Now, uh, you have a formula that's very interesting. It actually predicts where Bitcoin should land at the start of every Bitcoin halving cycle. So we'll talk about this formula. And you actually kind of wrote an article a couple of years ago um, making yeah. the correct projection for where Bitcoin should land this cycle, right? So tell us about how this formula works. Okay. I This formula works very – it's a very simple formula. It's written as Bitcoin's price at the next halving event is equal to Bitcoin's price at the previous halving event multiplied by the block reward and added to that 7%. Okay. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit more on the logic here? So how did you – come up with this formula and how do we know that it works well i first came out with my first iteration of this formula the day after the third having may 2020 and it was the first having i witnessed as a true bitcoiner i hypothesized that since the supply side is purely driven by mathematics that maybe there might be a mathematical equation that could predict the price on the having dates. So I just attempted to come up with that. And after back testing and analyzing my results, I believe I got something pretty close. So what you're saying is the price at the Bitcoin having cycle, it's not driven primarily by fundamental factors. It's a purely mathematical uh, equation. It's it, it, because you're looking at it from a purely math perspective. You're mm -hmm. not factoring in macro variables here. Correct? Correct. But sh should you be f expanding this formula and factoring in other variables? I mean, why? I, I, I just don't. Yeah, go okay. on. Okay. Well, that's why this formula is meant to project the price the day of the halving event. I believe that you couldn't make a formula that would predict the highs or the lows or any anything like that, because that is based on fundamental events. But the four-year cycles, I believe, are based on purely supply. So what was the prediction that you made in 20, uh, well, for this uh, halving cycle in 2024? The, my formula works out to $58,990, and it was within $1,000 of the low on the day of the halving. So we're at 2024. In 2028, you're projecting what? around $210,000 for the day of the halving on 2028. Okay, so is there a theoretical maximum? Is it just gonna keep going up forever at every single halving cycle? Well, no, because one of the variables in the formula is the block reward. And if you look, you'll notice that after 2032, the block rewards become less than one. So theoretically, the formula would say that it would decline at every halving event after that date. So what is the um what is the highest number uh at what, what sorry what is the highest bitcoin price at the highest bitcoin having cycle? The highest price at the having cycle would be 2032 and that comes in at around $350,000. If you look at the chart I gave you and you connect the dots, you'll notice that the line it makes actually represents closer to the bottom of the price than the top. So it's 350,000 is what I'm predicting for having 2032, but it could go much higher in that cycle. And that, what's interesting is I'm looking at the chart and it looks like in past having events, the minimum and the maximum during that cycle kind of oscillates around the having price. If you graph out the having price in a logarithmic curve, which you have on this chart, 
And so you can kind of make the argument that this orange line, which is the, you know, the, the curve projecting out uh, different having uh, cycles going forward, that's kind of the average for every cycle, right? Could you, could you kind of make that argument? Yeah, you could. And um, that's why I think that mathematically it could work. So then in theory, we're talking about a theoretical average maximum for Bitcoin of around $350,000 sometime in the next 10 years. Theoretically, we're talking about $350,000 on the halving date, 2032. Yeah. Yes. Right. But it could, go, it could go much higher, but it could go... It could go. It could peak much higher. It could also go much lower. But again, looking yeah. at this chart, it looks like it's kind of an average price. Um, yeah. It, could, could you? Could you like just thinking long term? Because I know Bitcoin is going to continue getting mined into twenty one forty. We're both not going to be here by then. <laughs> but Joey, uh, by by then, would you see Bitcoin just reaching, um, just continuously going up? Uh, because of mathematics, or does it, does it theoretically have to make sense that it needs to? kind of top out at some point yeah exactly it my formula and my theory is that it will top out and bitcoin is such a revolutionary technology but by 2140 as we both can probably assume there is going to be another disruptive technology even more advanced than bitcoin so that's that's my um explanation of that Okay, closing off, I want to talk about uh, Bitcoin ETF news. So this just came in from yesterday. Why BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF surpassing Grayscale's GBTC is bullish. So I'll just read a few paragraphs here. Four months after the launch of spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds, BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust, or iBit, has surpassed the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, or GBTC, in size. It's official now. iBit is king of the category and will probably be for decades, Bloomberg Intelligence ETF analyst Eric Bauchunas posted on Wednesday. How significant is this for you, at least? Well, um, this is significant. This was destined to happen at some point because Grayscale just kept bleeding out it, and outflowing while BlackRock's iBit kept growing. And it was pretty much um, a self-fulfilling prophecy, I believe, with uh, BlackRock owning the majority or the largest share of the 850,000 Bitcoin currently held in the spot ETFs. Joey, great uh, talking to you today. Where can we learn more about your work? You could see my work at thegoldforecast.com slash crypto, where I have a newsletter. It's free to sign up. Come check me out. All right. We'll put the link down below. Thanks very much, Joey. Speak again soon. Yep. See you, David. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.